Hi guys, it is another cold, gloomy, midwinter day here on Memorial Day weekend 2021. It is now Sunday, May 30th, 2021 uh, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, where we're roasting in, what is it, 48 degrees outside or something. And uh, so we're hiding in here on this gloomy Sunday. And uh, what I'm doing while I'm doing this round, I am uploading a, uh, a video. We have a new exciting update about the Collapse Chronicles interviews with a big asterisk beside that. Uh, I'm, there will be a video coming on uh, today. I highly encourage you to watch it to see what is going on with the Collapse Chronicles interviews coming back on the air here starting well I guess starting today and uh, kicking in tomorrow for sure so while I'm doing that I'm just over here on the mainstream media and I've mentioned before that Yahoo News good old Yahoo News is now I guess what they're doing is they are combing through so I don't even have to do it anymore apparently so they use their little algorithms to figure out what kind of stories would interest Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles every day, looking through my strange set of algorithms. So they pick out the top 10 stories that they think doomers should be listening to. Uh, and so this is, let's see how uh, Yahoo News did picking out what they think collapsitarians need to know on Sunday, May 30th, 2021. They're leading off with, this is recommended for you. Recommended for you doomers. Starting off with another tick-borne illness may be a growing problem. Can you say babesiosis? Babesiosis, the newest term for the glossary of the collapse. Babesiosis, unlike Lyme disease, which is spread by the same ticks, babesiosis has no telltale rash and can put many groups of people at serious risk, if not caught early. So there you go. So we have a new uh, something out there to kill us all, babesiosis, and there's no real warning sign, so I guess every time you pull a tick off of you, and we're heading into a wet summer in upstate New York, my guess is the ticks are going to be, uh, all over us here this summer. Now, why would they give me a story, the number two story, about Trump's longtime ally Roger Stone has warned that Trump must prepare to be indicted. Okay. Yes, he will, according to Roger Stone, he will be indicted imminently for bank fraud or tax fraud. Uh, not sure why that is of interest to collapsitarians, but it is good news. Anything they can indict that criminal for has my vote. Okay, what is The Guardian up to today? All right, we have a photo essay in The Guardian. California faces another drought as lake beds turn to dust. Water shortages and dry conditions are already affecting California as the governor has declared a drought emergency in 41 of California's 58 counties. So if you want to uh, see what that, what California looks like in May, good Lord, guys. Uh, you have to go over there to the Guardian. Then we have a story about drug cartels in Mexico coming up. Okay. Then we have some hopium. 
<clears throat> turning Kenya's plastic waste problem into a building solution. Yes, many see the sprawling Dandora dump as an insurmountable problem, but Nzambi Mati sees millions of, you know, solutions to the problem. We're going to save the planet by mining garbage dumps in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. And there is a lot more uh, going on in here that this story would tell you about. It is mining garbage dumps will be a major uh, industry. It will be about the only sustainable injury, injury industry uh, on the planet in the 21st century mining garbage dumps. James Howard Kunstler, you know, has this theme running through his made by hand uh, stories about after the collapse of global industrial civilization where you don't have all of these giant fossil fuel powered planet eating machines, it will be the garbage pickers will be the survivors of the collapse of civilization. Glad to see uh, Yahoo News recommending this story. All right, I think we have found the story we're gonna get into. I'm just gonna read the headline and we'll come back to it. How about this term for the collapse? Sea snot. Sea snot is clogging up Turkey's coast suffocating marine life and devastating fisheries. Oh, and I think they should have made that the number one Doomer headline for us Doomers. We will come back to the sea snot story. Uh, all right, I guess they've heard me talking about Bozo Nero. <clears throat> Brazil's Bozo Nero cracks down on dissent as his presidency enters crisis mode. Indigenous leaders, journalists, scientists, doctors, and other critics have faced increasing threats from the far-right president. Now, of course, this article is a lot more about corona panic, uh, about his handling of the corona panic. And I'm not even going to give my opinion of Bozo Nero's handling of that crisis. A lot more about that than it is about his handling of the Amazon rainforest. But that is a little bit part of that story. But anyway. Okay. The Southwest Climate Warning Drought wildfire risk and rising temperatures. Yes, talking about, you know, this is just the bigger picture, uh, you know, they're in California, talking about how the entire U.S. Southwest is, is just, is gone. Just kiss goodbye, the U.S. Southwest. Okay, I, I saw this story earlier this weird story about um, how the number of deer collisions with cars where wolves have been reintroduced. Uh, they're talking, I think this was in Minnesota or Michigan, where, where wolves are present and have been reintroduced into the ecosystem, ecosystem, the number of collisions literally hitting deer with your cars they're talking about has dropped by 24 uh, percent in, you know, high deer areas like I live here in the, in the Finger Lakes of New York, down 24 percent thanks to the wolves so uh, we have another bear attack in Yellowstone National Park. I guess the guy didn't 
get hurt too bad, and then uh, talking about flooding in New Zealand while California and the American Southwest are drying up, burning, and blowing away. New Zealand is underwater. Good thing I'm not down there. Okay, but let's look into this story. Sea snot is clogging up Turkey's coast. Yes. Sea snot. <clears throat> this is some pretty nasty stuff. A goopy substance called sea snot has been clogging Turkish coast and the Sea of Mamara for months. The mucus has been filling fishing nets, suffocating coral, and killing marine life. I mean, coral. You know, as Southerners, we, we say coral, but it's cool, cool, uh, and killing marine life. Climate change and fertilizer runoff may be fueling the algae bloom that is behind the sea snot. Okay, this is Business Insider bringing us this doom and gloom blankets of a goopy camel-colored substance have been accumulating in the waters off Turkey's coast for months. The goop called mucilage or sea snot is covering so much of the coastline along the Sea of Marmara that people can no longer fish there. The sea snot formations can grow up to 100 feet deep. The sea snot fills fishing nets and weighs them down. One fisherman said that nets have been bursting from the weight of the mucus. Yes, a fishery co-op leader said people were barely putting in, pulling in a fifth of the fish they hauled at this time just last year. Marine mucilage or mucilage is a goopy discharge of protein, carbohydrates, and fat from microscopic algae called phytoplankton. You know, I, I heard that phytoplankton was crashing all over the oceans, but now, it's, it's, you know, when it rains, it pours. Either the phytoplankton is completely disappearing and taking out the bottom of the food chain, or it's exploding, as in this case. It's one or the other. It's feast or famine here in, uh, here in the collapse of a planet. <clears throat> it was first documented in 2007 and has been getting worse with each passing year. Normally, sea snot is not a problem, but when phytoplankton grow out of control, the goop can overpower marine ecosystems. This can wreak ecological havoc since the substance can harbor bacteria like E. coli and ensnare or suffocate marine life. Eventually, <coughs> the snot sinks to the sea floor where it then can blanket coral and suffocate them too. Yes, since phytoplankton thrive in warm water, scientists suspect that climate change is fueling the new sea snot crisis runoff from nitrogen and phosphorus-rich fertilizer in sewage could also be causing an explosion in the phytoplankton population. Uh, Yep, yep, yep. This is the largest accumulation of sea snot ever. It began in deep waters during the winter, then spread to the coastline. Um, marine biologist, whose name I cannot pronounce, became alarmed once the snot... Uh, once the snot carpets continued to grow throughout the spring, yes, quote, the gravity 
of the situation set in when I dived for measurements in March and discovered severe mortality in corals. Thousands of fish have been washing up dead in coastal towns as well. The fish could be suffocating because sea snot clogs their gills or because it depletes the water's oxygen levels. <clears throat> Quote, once the mucilage covers the coast, it limits the interaction between water and the atmosphere. There you go, guys. Your new term for the collapse, sea snot. And I would like to thank Yahoo News for doing such a fine job of uh, doing our daily roundup of doom for us where uh, we don't even have to, you know, surf through all of the <clears throat> all of the usual crap. And uh, I only see one mention uh, of hopium greenwashing crap like landfills in sub-Saharan Africa are going to save the planet. Yes, I am sure landfills in southern and sub-Saharan Africa are the key. But we're going to wrap up this short rant. That wasn't too bad. And don't forget, guys, uh, to watch this interview, my first interview on Collapse Chronicles uh, in over a year coming up uh, somewhere in the page. You might be surprised at who I interview. But I will just let you go see that for yourself. Bye, guys. Nice little dog. We got to turn the heater back on.